Good day, everyone. This is Polythetals, and you're listening to DDO Players News, where we take a look at the latest news in DDO and on the tabletop. And please welcome my co-host from Ravenloft, Draculata. Hey now, everybody. Hello, Drac. How are things going in Barovia? Nyeh. 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 Usual pesky peasants. Mm-hmm. Said that a couple times fast, actually, but yeah. <laughs> Easy I think that for we'll... you to say. The predictable pesky peasants. Okay, now you're just showing off. <laughs> Sorry. I... Uh... I have an old saying, it's called, there's never too much alliteration. <laughs> well, yeah, that does sum you up in, in pretty much one sentence, so uh, <laughs> congratulations. Let's then head off into our news for this week, and we had a little bit of a patch, update 43, uh, patch 1. And... Which was released Tuesday, October 8th, and it blew up the servers, apparently. What? Because bad things happened after this patch came out. <laughs> Everything broke. So I'm not sure if it was related to the patch or some other stuff they did. But yeah, we did get the patch. And then we had a bunch of downtimes to fix all the problems. Because uh, there was login issues. There was lag. Uh, monsters weren't spawning. It was a mess. But a thankfully, mess. everything is now resolved. The game is running smoothly. As yay. far as I know. So, yes, yay. <laughs> Good on you, Standing Stone, for fixing it. But let's talk about this patch. The major thing that uh, Update 43 Patch 1 did is it brought the Night Rebels back. And the Night Rebels has a new dungeon and new rewards. You can uh, do the new reward quest, which is called Smashing Pumpkins. I actually have not done it yet, so I do don't even know what dungeon it is. Okay, it could it. I'm just wondering, could it be related to the smashing crate, to one of the smashing crate type dungeons? Oh, that you, that maybe, you maybe. Because I was trying to think with the name Smashing Pumpkins. I'm like, all right. So what quest did they night revelify? Ah, oh, I bet it is. I bet it's uh, one of the Badri quests where you go in and smash all the crates. I bet you that's what it is. Like I said, I don't know. I actually haven't ran it yet. So uh, I'm sure everybody's yelling at their, whatever they're listening to the podcast right now, going, you dummy, it's Blank Quest. But haven't been in game, so I don't know. You don't know. <laughs> And this does run through November the 3rd. Another thing to point out about the Night Rebels uh, we were going to talk about this next, but we'll just go ahead and talk about it now since we talked about it in the uh, patch notes. Uh, Cordovan did over on the forums post that we have not been previously been explicit about it, but here's the deal with the spooky versions of the Cobalt's new ringleader. Because a lot of people noticed Cobalt's new ringleader was not a part of the Night Rebels this year. Okay. So people thought, well, was it just a mistake? Did you get to turn it on? Cordovan clarifies this. As some folks have surmised, it was rotated out in favor of the new Night Rebels quest, Smashing Pumpkins. The plan moving forward is going to be rotate out older Night Rebels quest for the new ones. These quests are not gone and they will return in future Night Rebel events. So they won't always be the same, what is it, five dungeons? Four, five, five, I think it's five. It always won't be the same five dungeons. So like next year, maybe Cobalt's new ringleader might come back and one other one might drop out. Or maybe Cobalt's new ringleader and one other one will be gone and we'll have the new quest for next year and then we'll have the Smashing Pumpkins again. So they're kind of going to rotate them in and out, which is kind of cool. I guess I, I kind of like that. It kind of keeps it fresh. There okay. was there was some people on the forums that didn't really like that answer too much. They wanted oh, them well. just to keep all the quest up, and I'm like, you know, it's fine. So there you go, Night Rebels. Uh, enjoy it through November the third. I'm sad I haven't ran it at all yet. I'm gonna have to rectify that because Night Rebels is my favorite event. Ah, uh, 
Uh, elsewhere in our uh, update 43 patch one notes, we have the War Priest and War Souls Wrathful Weapon Damage now properly hits undead. The Epic Past Life Primal Ancient Power now properly grants the plus two attack stack when toggled on. Uh, in the Hardcore League, a lot of people are excited about this. The Bloody Footprints Cosmetic created by the Death Follows You Feet will now draw on other clients. So everybody is going to be able to see you reached 5,000 favor on the Hardcore server now. Because you're going to see little Bloody Footprints following everybody around that actually earned those in Hardcore League. Also along okay. with that, the Death Watches You cosmetic, that is the 1750 favor reward, will now work correctly on human and ASMR female characters. So that's a good thing. Uh, we did get some uh, loot list updates. Uh, the Quest Soul Survivor has been adjusted to the correct list of items that can drop from its end chest now. Uh, Finding Doris got some updates. Window panes now properly display their correct state during the quest. A broken elevator shaft now has a notice directing you to the other one. Secret doors that are opened by monsters will no longer accidentally close when players interact with them. And traps do slightly less damage and are a little easier to avoid now. A little bit easier. And the funniest... I guess funny is not the right word I want to use. The most ironic patch note award goes to the native Mac OS client for DDO has now been uh, deprecated and is now replaced with a new wine based client solution for Mac, so for Mac OS. <laughs> that is irony. <laughs> that is a definition of irony. Because you remember last week we talked about, oh, hey, <laughs> the wine client. <laughs> Is not compatible with uh, the up the newly uh, updated Mac OS Catalina, so do not update as we said last week if you are going to run Catalina, because you will not be able to play DDO. So the footnote is that something that was with the original patch notes, or did they add that later? Uh, that was added later, yeah. The deprecated Mac OS client erroneously references Lotro instead of DDO, and it's a message when they released it as somebody forgot to change lotro for ddo in some of the wording <laughs> you know probably the same guy worked on both sides and forgot which game he was working on at the time so it's okay so yeah so there you go there's our update not much in it really other than the big thing is the night rebels which is exciting and then as i said we had all sorts of uh issues with the servers from about the time this patch came out until i think saturday morning is when everything stabled out so it was quite the week for ssg quite a week and those are the patch notes so now we already said some things about night rebels is there anything else you wish to add about that uh no just like i said there's a new quest smashing pumpkins go check it out like i said i don't unfortunately don't know what quest it is i'm sure there's a lot of people that have ran it billions of times by now and are enjoying the heck out of it but sadly i am not one of those people <laughs> oh well then let's head into extra live 2019 and ddo stream marathon information Yep, we're going to do Extra Life in DDO again. Uh, Cordoman did post about this, so they're also doing it in Lotro as well. So if you play Lotro, you have your choice. You can support DDO side of Extra Life or Lotro side of Extra Life. It's kind of cool that way. Or you can just support Team Standing Stone, and that, I think, will work on both sides. But once again, Standing Stone games and players uh, throughout the DDO community are going to be raising money for Extra Life. If you're not familiar with Extra Life, that is a, a charity that people play games. You donate to the team that they're on or donate to them as a person, and all money they raised goes to the hospital of their choice. And what that money is used for is the kids that are in the hospital. They buy them board games and video games and all sorts of gaming things. So when the kids are in the hospital, 
they have you know some cool games to play with and kind of take their mind off of why they have to be in the hospital in the first place. Uh, Standing Stone Games, of course, is supporting the Boston Children's Hospital. What a shock. I'm going to say that should be a shock to anybody. So, as a token of thanks, they will once again be offering minor incentives to all the people who donate. Uh, like usual, if you want in on the giveaways, you need to send Cordovan a quick private message on the forums so he can get all of your info in one place. Because all he's going to see if you donate to Standing Stone Team Standing Stone Games are to his uh, page. All he's going to see is your name donated here. It's not going to say what your forum name is, which character's name is, or anything like that. So, important note, if you want some of the incentives, you've got to send him a private message. And I will provide a link to this post so you can donate either to Standing Stone Games as a whole or uh, Cordobin. And if you want to sign up and raise money yourself, and you can join Standing Stone Games team if you would like, there's also a link for that as well. The goal that Standing Stone Games has set this year is $10,000 for Boston Children's Hospital. And here is your incentives for throwing a little money towards the kids' way. If you donate at least $10, you're going to be entered into various studio point and other drawings that are unlocked by the team Standing Stone Games, which when they reach certain milestones. And the group Milestone Incentives, uh, uh, incentives it's a hard word to say for me for some reason. Uh, if they reach $2,000, uh, going to give away 10 500 DDO point codes and 10 picks from the community loot list. And that is going to be just randomly distributed to people who donate at least $10. So your name's going to be put in a fishbowl, we'll say, and they'll draw your name out. If you donate at least 10, you can be in the running for that. If they hit 4,000, going to get 10 more 500 DDO points and 10 more community loot list picks. 6,000, you guessed it, 10 more 500-point DDO codes, and 10 pork barrel stacks will randomly be distributed to folks who, you guessed it, donated 10 or more dollars. For $8,000, 10 more additional codes. For pork barrels, once again, for the $10 uh, minimum. And if they reach their goal, they're going to give away two Ultimate Fan Editions of the Mastermind of Sharn. So what exactly is a pork barrel? You click it, and it rains ham, because ham is awesome. Uh, huh. You are totally confused right now, aren't you? Bingo! <laughs> <laughs> I could tell. Yes, what it does is, literally, you click it, and it just rains down tasty hams. So Tasty then you, hams. So you no grab green the eggs with it. No green eggs, just tasty hams. But tasty hams are lovely, and they also give you fifty hit points over one minute. Mm, tasty okay. hams. Okay. So yes, yeah, so get yourself a pork barrel, maybe if you're lucky. And then uh, also, anyone who donates at least ten dollars is going to be uh, entered into the a drawing for a Masterminds of Sharn Ultimate Edition that they are going to award at the end of the fundraiser. So they're going to give at least one Ultimate Fan Edition away, maybe two more if they hit their goal, actually. And then individually, you have a couple of things. Uh, you got to donate uh, $5. You can get the forum title of your choice within Community guard Guidelines. PM yeah. Cordovan's <laughs> with that. So yeah, you can't have, you know, something really dumb because, you know. Just don't be dumb. Make a cool right. title, and Cordovan will be happy to give it to you. Uh, $10, a custom forum avatar, once again, within community guidelines. $20, you get two picks from the community loot list. $30, two additional picks from the community loot list. And if you donate $50, you get a code for three pork barrels, along with two more additional community loot list. And all of that is cumulated, cumulative, words are easy for me tonight apparently. So if you donate $50, you also gain all the benefits of the lower tier, tiers and so on and so forth. So that is pretty sweet. 
And then uh, in late October, they uh, will be hosting a DDO Extra Life Marathon on Twitch TV slash DDO stream. And they're going to raise money uh, during that stream. So there'll be a bunch of different streamers streaming DDO. It usually lasts almost 24 hours. I think last year it went 24 hours. There was enough different people that spread it out that they could actually do it. Uh, for 24 hours so that is cool so extra life is coming back i hope that the ones who have the ones for the wee hours in the morning are people that live in places where it's (laughs) well time such as australia (laughs) we can hope we We can can hope hope. right and that was really interesting there is the custom form avatar i know a lot of people have been asking for such an ability and that they're finding a way in which they might be able to do it. Since they don't want people to willy nilly, right? Exactly. Custom avatars, because that yeah. could go horribly, horribly or, wrong. Let's then head into the DDO Chronicle for this week, issue three hundred and fifty-four, where Gordon is back to doing the Chronicle because, well, reasons. <laughs> Yeah, basically, all of you who was doing it uh, moved on to something different. She is no longer at Standing Stone Games, so Cordovan gets the Chronicle again. I'm sure he missed doing the Chronicle. Probably not, but we'll say he missed doing the Chronicle. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, a little bit, but he he is a bit busy, so therefore... He is going to take until Friday to do it instead of the traditional Thursday. So no more Thursday Chronicles. They'll come out on Friday. And because of that, they're going to try to get these store sales out onto the forums on Thursday so that we'll be able to know in advance what they are. So does that mean I'll have to start doing store posts again like I used to? I because remember back in the day I used to post on the site about what the store used... sales were. Well, that hmm. depends on whether or not it's going to be in the Chronicle afterwards. Because if it's going to be on the Chronicle afterwards, it might be redundant. Hmm. True. Unless you want to make sure you get it out right in time for Thursday. Hmm. Because if it's going to take you until Friday to get the store post out, it's be redundant. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. We'll see about that. That sounds like a lot of work on my part. We'll see. We'll see if these store post comes back. I don't know. I'm not even sure if anybody even actually read those or not, but we'll see. And of course, hey, who would have guessed the Chronicle cover is Night Rebels? Ah, okay. I guess that makes sense. Who would have thunk it? Mm-hmm. And which quest is this from? Uh, that I don't know. It's just a spooky little shot so it's night rebels. <laughs> i mean I don't know. like i said i haven't done the night rebels yet oh well i'm very very salty about not being able to run the night rebels as of yet well because if this is pumpkin smashing then it's obviously not the one i was thinking of <laughs> i have no idea it's just a spooky shot so it's night rebels related we'll oh okay whether well, or not literally from it yeah right we'll just put it that way in our Chronicle this week, uh, the Community Spotlights, uh, it's Henshin Mystics versus the Fist Monk in Strim Tom's latest deep dive. So click to see which monk is better. Piley played a monk, but you didn't have a good time with your monk, though, did you? I did not have a good time with my monk. And maybe someday I will get my monk to a high enough level so that I'll be able to TR into because remember my monk is was the first character that came in that's on a second life. Oh, that's right, that's right. I forgot about that. Right, because well, the name of my monk is Pine Gear. It's not exactly a name that you would give a monk. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, okay, true. But check over to see what Strim Tom has to say about that. Let's jump right in to our fan site news section. Dams of the DDO are finding the Soul Splitter in their latest episode. So click over for that. We got a uh, shout out for our show last week. DDO Cusplat tries to figure out how things work in their latest show. T-A-T-H Games. I'm not sure if you say that that way or you say it. 
Tata, I don't, I don't know how you would say it. Tati? I just say T-A-T-H games. <laughs> They're playing DDO on YouTube. Check it out. I haven't actually watched them. I'll have to watch them and see if they like say it because I don't know if it's like one of them. They have like a fancy way of saying that. And then MJ and the crew from Massively OP also played some DDO on stream. It's awesome to see all these people playing DDO. Ginger Spice is running a Tiefling Druid. Click over for his tips and some builds for uh, his latest video, Niv Mind. Streams regularly over on Twitch as well, so give him a follow if you would like to know when he is streaming. And don't forget about D&D Night on DDO Stream. That's bringing D&D 5e Tabletop Gaming to twitch.tv slash DDO Stream. And the last show that was on there was The Edge of Evil. So check that out. Brock and Friends is forgetting the past. So click over and check out how they forgot the past. And Newbie, Newbie Cabra crushes reapers and more in their latest video as well we have a comment what's the fastest food in sharn claw flip burgers okay very specific yeah well yeah. that's because it has to be the burgers has to be from something very fast right right okay oh see all right pine leaf logic gotcha gotcha i couldn't think of a good answer for this all I can say of all I can say is it better not be delivered on one of those stupid sky sleds. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I don't know what they're gonna bring that's gonna be fast, but it better not be on one of them dumb sleds. Oh boy. Yeah. I <laughs> I get the impression you don't like sky sledding. No, no. Uh, um, yeah. No. Oh, you must have had fun last week. <laughs> yeah. Let's just move to our screenshot of the week, shall we? Clubberling selfie gets interrupted in the 435th DDO screenshot of the week. That would be an interrupted selfie for sure. And who interrupted it? <laughs> the skeleton behind him. Oh, okay. I, I guess I wasn't sure who was the who was doing the selfie and who was the interrupting it. <laughs> the skeleton photobombed him, man. All right, I guess you got a point there. He's been photobombed by a skeleton. Uh, it looks like he's doing a battle cry or something. Mm-hmm. I think he's about to get clubber langed himself. See what Ooh. I did there? See what I did? Okay. Anyway. Yeah. Let's head into our store sales. What's for sale this week? Well, the big news is the Inquisitive is now available in the DDO store. So if you would like to roll up an Inquisitive... And you don't have a Sharn, you didn't buy the Sharn pack that had it in it. Now you can get it. I do believe it is 495 DDO points. So not a bad deal for the Inquisitive. We have our Rise Again sale this week. 20% off. Select reincarnation items, healing items, spell point of potions, and quest elixirs through October the 17th our weekly coupon code is going to get you a free medium guild renown elixir use the co coupon code guild Medi. that doesn't make any sense <laughs> oh guild okay guild medium gotcha it's yeah. guild med okay g-u-i-l-d-m-e-d -E now i get it all right at first, it didn't make sense to me. I'm like, that is a really weird code this week, but I see what they tried to do. G-U-I-L-D-M-E-D, -E Guild Med, because it's a free medium. Okay, all right. Gotcha, Standing Stone, gotcha. Also, don't forget, with the return of Night Rebels, is also the return of three freak long-lasting Night Rebels keys. So you get three of those. Two, the number two, spooky for the number four, me. So two, spooky for me. And that is and one account, so use wisely. And what does the lasting mean? That means they will last forever. Because the keys that you get dropped by mobs go away at the end of the Night Rebels. They they break. Just like ah. the, can the, you know, the candies go away as well. Right. The lasting Night Rebels keys, any key you buy from the store or you get free with this code, will not do that. 
because if you go spend a bunch of money on keys and then they don't work after the event, I would be a little ticked off. Yeah, I could understand <laughs> yeah. that. So these are the lasting ones. So in theory, you could get these. And then if you didn't want to run Night Revels at all, you could save these until next year. And then you would have three keys at the beginning of next year. Yeah, I suppose that is the case. And that code will last through November the 3rd, which conveniently is the same time that Night Revels ends. <gasps> what a coincidence. It's amazing how that worked out. <laughs> Uh, let's then head into our week in gaming. And- Draculetta, what were you up to? Dying in hardcore. You were dying in hardcore. Oh, you died. I Ouch. died. I died. Level 10. Uh, lag. It was a lag-related death. Oh, hold on. If, was it during the big lag fest? Yep. Then why did you play on the hardcore server during Cause the Because I'm stupid. Because <laughs> I'm dumb and stupid and like punishment, apparently. I don't know. Yeah, it, uh, we were in one of the quests, and now I'm not even going to remember what quest it was. Uh, one of the Temple of the Six quests where Bruku sends you in and all that. Um, I had found a secret door. I opened up the door. I was standing just inside the door because I was waiting for Myth because she was getting some DBs from, from her cleric because she didn't have any spell points left, so her cleric was kind of giving her some spell points. I was standing there, and the next thing I know, I'm dead. So so I look back at the combat log. I got hit by six electric traps all at once. What? <laughs> oh, no, I'm sorry. Po- it was poison traps. Sorry, poison. So then I went on the wiki and I'm like, all right, what the heck? So I went on the wiki to see what traps were in there. And the trap said that if you walk straight in the middle of the room, there's like gar. Well, see, because when I first op- opened the secret door, I seen there was like six gargoyles. There was like three gargoyles on each side. Or not gargoyles, but like those statue heads, you, you know? So I said, okay, that's trapped in there. So I didn't go all the way in because I was going to try to find the box and disarm them, blah, blah, blah. So the wiki says if you walk straight in the the middle of the room all those traps go off if you stay to the sides there's no traps that go off i took a half a step inside the room i wasn't anywhere close to the middle of the room to set those traps off when i died but apparently the server thought i was (laughs) and then and then myth said she could see where my stone dropped and i was nowhere close to any of those statues so that was a lag death and i was pretty pissed off and i'm pretty sure i'm done with hardcore i would think you would be yeah i'm pretty sure i'm done at this point because there's no way i'm gonna hit 1750 now and I, that was just a cheap death so yeah well, some of some of it's on me i probably shouldn't have been playing when it was that laggy yada 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 okay i get that yeah. but i was nowhere near those freaking traps which pisses me off to no end but a death is a death on hardcore so yes right yeah that's the problem with hardcore so yep pretty sure i am done with hardcore unless i just run somebody up to five just so i can get in the chronicle since i went through all this crap for a month now yeah that would be the only reason to do so at least i'll get something out of it because i'm not going to get my uh bloody eyes which really 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 makes me very salty and very very mad that I'm not going to get my eyes because that's all I wanted. All I wanted in life was the bloody <laughs> eyes. But no. All you wanted in life. But no. My hopes and dreams are dashed again, but it's fine. It's fine. Uh, then uh, elsewhere in gaming, did a bunch of tabletop gaming. Ooh. Played a bunch of games uh, that we're going to have. Re- well, most of the games are going to have reviews for. Uh, played Horrified, Jaws, The Terror Below, and the Funko Strategy Game. Those are all for review. Reviews will be coming soon-ish, trademark, to uh, the site. I'm not sure when I'll get 
around to those. I want to get them up pretty quickly, though, uh, since it's still fresh in my mind. And uh, we also played Mansions of Madness, uh, second edition. But that's not for review. That was just for fun, I guess. Um, I will yeah. talk about Mansions here in a second. Uh, Horrified, of course, is the... Uh, we've talked about Horrified a couple times. Horrified is the universal uh, monsters game where the monsters are trying to terrify the town you're going in trying to get what you need to destroy the monster and save the villagers we we actually played that several times because after we played it uh the first time well we played it one time and then we decided we were going to play it again with other different monsters so we, we did that and we played with the mummy and the invisible man which are supposed to be two of the harder monsters to play against we won very, very easily. Like, it was a cakewalk. And my friend was like, wow, if that was supposed to be hard, I'd hate to see it being really hard. And then I was like, oh, yeah, you know what? We weren't playing right. What? <laughs> Oops. Yeah. In 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 Horrified, uh, after the player can take as many actions as their character allows them to, some some characters can take three actions, some can take four, some can take five, and that can be either a move action, or you, you can pick an item up, or you, you can move a, a, a villager. Um, after you take your turn, you draw from the monster deck, and then the monsters move. We didn't do that. We only draw the monster card after all of us went. You're, you're, you're supposed to do that after every player goes. And after I figured that out, I'm like, oh, yeah, we totally messed that roll up. How many players did you have? Four. Yeah. So it was super. And I'm like, and my friend that was I, I was playing with and I had, had played it at Gen Con. And we're like, this was so much harder at Gen Con. Why was it so much harder at Gen Con? Well, it's because we were playing it right at Gen Con. So we played it again the right way, and yeah, it was really hard. We did manage to win, but our terror tracker was almost at the end, so we almost lost. Uh, we won basically at the very last moment that we could win. So look for a review of that coming up. That's Horrified, and that is from Ravensburger. Also from Ravensburger, uh, we played the Jaws board game, of course, based off the movie. Jaws is, uh, it's kind of an interesting game, because it starts out being a hidden movement game. In the first round, one player is playing Jaws, and then the other players are playing three characters from the movie. And Jaws is moving around, but it's hidden. You don't know where he's at. You have to kind of try to guess where he's at and he's trying to eat uh as many swimmers as he can if he eats i think it's nine i can't remember on the number i think nine if he eats nine swimmers you automatically move into round two or you can shoot barrels onto him uh if you're familiar with the jaws movie you know why you're shooting barrels at him yeah uh if you get two barrels to hit him so you're basically shooting these barrels in the water where you think he is you just kind of guess because you're going around the map and there's different each character has certain uh, skills they can use like like the one has a fish finder so he he throws the fish finder out and then the person that's playing jaws has to say i'm not in the area with the fish finder or i'm not close to it or it's like okay i'm in that area area with the fish finder are i'm close to the area and then one character has uh binoculars to where he can look and see if he can see jaws and then you know you have to ask jaws are you here and he's saying no i'm not at that beach so so you either get nine swimmers eaten jaws eats nine or you get two barrels into him and then when that happens you flip the board over and then you're playing on the boat and then at that point, you're trying to damage Jaws, and Jaws is trying to damage the boat. And if he does enough damage to the boat, parts of the boat fall off, and then you fall in the water. And then when you're in the water, Jaws can eat you. And if Jaws gets you in the water, you're dead. So it's an interesting game. Very, very well done. If you are a Jaws fan, you're going to love the board game. It really, really sticks to the theme, sticks to the movie. Uh, it's great. We were saying quotes from the movie the whole time we were playing. Uh, so look for a full review 
review of that coming up, but that is Jaws from Ravensburger. And then from Renegade Game Studios, we played Terror Below, which that is pretty much what it is. If you were familiar with uh, the movie uh, Tremors, it's pretty much Tremors the board game. You are fighting giant sandworms that are under the ground, and you're driving around in little vehicles collecting the eggs and the rocks that they come they the worms move up <clears throat> you are delivering those to different places and that's how you get points and in, in, in other things okay so it's it's a fun game there's a couple things you'll i didn't like about it i'll talk about it in my review there the biggest problem i had with it is they have like six little stand-ups that have amazing artwork on them of of these worms like these giant worms that you're fighting the stand-ups don't do anything you just set them around the board to make it look cool on the board to where when the worm moves you place a little like target token on the board why why did you not do a little worm mini or something why why bother making these stand-ups when you don't use them for nothing you just put them around the board and to make it look amazing. It's oh, that's my biggest problem with the game. It's just a waste, waste, waste. But fun game nonetheless, though we enjoy that. Uh, so once again, look for a full review of that coming over to the site. That's Terror Below from Renegade Game Studios, and then we played the Funko Strategy Game. We played the Batman version, so that is Batman, Robin, the Joker, and Harley Quinn is the four characters we played of that. That, of course, is from Funko. Uh, all of these games we did interviews at Gen Con about, so, and we've kind of talked about them on the, on the show before, but Funko Strategy Game, easy to learn, easy to pick up, very fun, very strategic. There is so much strategy, so the name applies really, really well. So look for a full review of that coming as well. And then played Mansions of Madness, the second edition. We played the second scenario uh, in the box, which was Escape from Innsmouth. Uh, oh, spo- that's spoiler alert, we one. didn't. <laughs> yeah, spoiler alert, we didn't escape. Oh, what a shock. We lost at the very, very end, the final turn, we... Okay, small spoiler alert. If you haven't played 2nd Edition and you don't want to know what the scenario is about, maybe skip ahead about 40 seconds here. Uh, in the in the scenario, you have to signal a boat to come and get you. Well, we finally figured out how to signal the boat. So we did everything that we needed to do. The boat was at the dock. One of the um, our characters got to the boat, talked to the captain of the boat and he said hold on you know everybody's not here yet and and the guy said well i'm not gonna wait very long so my friend and myself were getting ready to move towards the boat we we could have done it in like one more move and we all could have been on the boat and we all could have left the very last move as soon as she talked to the captain it was the um monsters round to go right the monsters burned down the dock and all the boats and we lost Uh but but one of my friends actually won because during the course of the game he became mad and his madness was he didn't want to win the game the correct way he wanted to lose the game so if he lost the game he actually won so he technically won the game because we didn't win the game right (laughs) that's mansions of madness that's how it goes that's mansions of madness (laughs) all right so yeah, it oh it it's oh my and we played that game for probably I bet we played for two hours and we were so excited because we finally figured out what to do. We're like, okay, we know where to go. There was one little section that we hadn't opened up yet, and we had did one thing. It was like a two part thing to signal the boat. We right. figured out the first part of it, and then the second part, my friend said, well maybe we have to do something else, like make a noise or something. And then my other friend said, oh hey maybe in that section there is a i'm gonna not say it for spoilers yeah, yeah, yes I, I think i know what you're talking about <laughs> and sure enough the thing that we needed was in that section that we hadn't opened yet so we went and did that and then but at that time we had like 
like angry mobs going around the outside of the map chasing us and they were spawning all sorts of monsters and it was just craziness you have very little time in that you know exactly and it just oh it was so frustrating though because we're like oh my god we're actually going to do this and i think that's a four skull on the hardness level i think four out of five so i thought oh my gosh we're gonna do this we're gonna beat a four skull and we lost at the very last minute <laughs> if we could have took one more turn as players we would have beat it but we we had to go through the mythos phase and that's that's when we lost it was like uh, dang yeah. it so I, close yeah there is someone a cat weasel a youtuber who does things like mansions and madness and arkham horror and stuff like that he refers to the mythos phase as the laugh and chuckle phase um, I wouldn't call it that, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> don't, well. don't think that would be the words I would use to describe <laughs> it, but sure. Well, it's, it's a very ironic name, I have to admit. <laughs> but yeah. Or at least it's, the, it, it's Cthulhu doing the laughing and chuckling. <laughs> well, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So uh, I really enjoy that. My only problem with Mansions of Madness, even with the app setup takes forever yeah setup oh takes my a very long gosh time. it's got a long setup time i mean i enjoy playing it once you get it all set up but it's like i had never played the first edition of it so i cannot imagine how much harder it was to set up first edition because one person had to like had do, to do everything it. that the right. app does so yeah i'm like oh Heck no. Heck no. So that was my week. How about you? What were you up to? I will begin with what we did in DDO where... Oh, that's right. Where In DDO where I was playing my... Wait, did, didn't we have Heaven and Hell this week? We did. I don't know. My weeks were running together. Yes, we did, actually. Yes, we did. For some reason, I did not get that into the... We did the next... Three quests? No, the next two quests. Two quests, okay. Yeah, yes, we did the next two quests, which was the what members only. Mm -hmm. Actually, which I really enjoyed. That was my favorite quest so far of the bunch. And the, okay, and the, uh, we did it the other, off the order I'm saying here, and the other one was the underlying assignment. Mm -hmm. I really liked mem members only that. I think so far out of the new Sharn quest, that's my favorite one. Yeah, so we did both of those. Then. So that gives us four of the six complete. So next time we, we have a chance to get to those, we might be able to finish it up. We'll see. Uh, we should be able to. And that'll be in two weeks. It won't be this, be this Thursday, but next Thursday. Well, if you're listening, at least the week this comes out. If you're listening to it in the future, that made no sense to you whatsoever. All right. So make that... All right, so on my Dragonborn, who was a level 17 artificer, I ran Soul Survivor, which is the last quest in the Soul Splitter area, or I should say I tried to run it. The, I don't think I've ever run into a quest that is so counter to my playing style. I have heard a lot of bad things about this quest. <laughs> Yes, if it this way is, uh, my note that I ha wrote here soon after doing this quest is, I think this quest will be on the top of my most hated quest list. So this is your crucible then? This could very well be my crucible. We'll see how I feel after we do it. Mm, yeah, because a, a lot of the times it plays different when I play with you for some reason. Because it seems like that was like another quest that you didn't like very much. And yeah. you said it, w it was like a totally different quest when we ran it together. It's... Well, that's because a lot of the a lot of the mobs seem to be that when you're running it with a player plus hireling, they seem to be at a setting which is a little bit tough for player plus hireling it looks like or something like that because we go through the same thing and we we just plow through the mobs together with our group but with my setup it's i'm sorry you've got this this this, this. <laughs> and especially considering that i'm playing an artificer which isn't exactly the tankiest well that's I've very very true there. you just want to stand back and pew pew right or, excuse and... me you want to stand back and pling pling 
pling pling yes and fortunately soul survivor is i will say of all the quests i've ever seen in my entire life this is the quest most designed for leroy jenkins <laughs> nice yeah at least that's the impression i got on it i did not like that particularly well i'm probably going to attempt it one more time because i got killed halfway through it oh wow yeah and i've not yet reattempted i'll probably attempt it one more time see how that goes and if that doesn't go well then i'll just say well i give up on this crazy thing it is the last one fortunately so i won't have to worry about it blocking another quest or anything like but it, it's at least i found it to be brutal maybe i'll find some trick when we run it together that i'll say oh this is all you have to do to survive this better but sounds like that based on what you've heard i'm not the only one who has a disliking for this quest. yeah no i've not heard real good things and there's a lot of forum chatter about it too so uh we'll see it, it'll be interesting to see what my take on it is after we do it right and then the other quest i decided after that i went back to the druids quest line where i ran thorn and paul now thorn and paul has one or two annoyances in it you know such as those pit yeah. traps in the darkest place in all the planet in all the world <laughs> well yeah you just kind of got to remember where they're at yeah you got to remember where they're at and i seem to have forgotten where most i think i've spotted one in advance but the others yes i all took a trip down on all of them so that's a little bit annoying there but pales 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 when compared to Soul Survivor. Oh, wow. The pit pales compared to Soul Survivor. Oh, my God. I Okay, I can't wait to run this quest now, then. <laughs> anyway. If, if we're bringing the pit into it now. <laughs> we are bringing the pit into it, yes. And at the end of Thorn and Paul, I did reach level 18. Yay! Which means that when I retry Soul Survivor, I at least be level 18. And maybe that one extra level will somehow help me to eke through it. Is that if I don't? Well, at least from the point of view of recording for YouTube, nah, not, I'm not going to make a third try on that. Maybe if I ever get to level some ridiculousness, I might just go back to the level 18 version just to plow through it. But that's... <laughs> But certainly not as a serious quest. <laughs> okay. Yes. Then in Minecraft, I ran the second week of the October Mage Rage. And this week's theme seemed to have been things like spiders and the like, which I suppose is it all that much of a shock considering that's October. And I spent a great deal of the time trying to hunt down spiders because I was trying to hunt spider eyes. Now you would think that if I go around killing spiders, that some that those spiders will relatively quickly drop an eye somewhere because you know, spiders have a good number of eyes. I was gonna say they have a lot of eyes and a lot of legs, so yeah, you would think, okay. Yeah, so you'll think I'd be able to nah, I had trouble finding those. Then in tabletop I played the next round for a tomb of annihilation where I ran the lost boy and in this one i decided to play the oslo but because i was in a situation where my paladin was i think maybe close to it by going through a trap to an edge and the other choice was to go to another edge which would, i would have had to do it where if i went to this edge i would not be able to get to it in one turn and of course it means encounter so of course i would draw an encounter as a result of so i went at this went there drew the encounter card actually no no all right and it was when i could survive all that and that's right i was about to think it was one but it could not have been the one i was just about to say so but i think it was not too bad of an encounter which is Okay, fine. I'll I'll just live through that one. The but what I what what I was doing there though is I noticed I had seven tiles drawn already, mm -hmm. and I decided I'll have my ranger pull the eighth tile, and I wanted the paladin to this new area I was going to happen to be right next to the starting location. So I drew my ninth tile at the right next to this on the starting tile you know, on the starting double tile, and I happened to pull the objective out because the objective was 
goes from nine to 12 somewhere. So I pulled the objective and yay, it was, I got the, and now in Lost Boy, you want that objective tile to be as close to the starting tile as possible. So I could not believe I looked out and got that ninth, that the ninth tile turned out to be the tree because I figured that with my luck, it'll probably have been many over. <laughs> right. Right. Now there was, there was taking me four tries that I would, been the fourth one and I would have to escort the boy all the way back and escorting the boy is a long tedious process and it took me only one turn for my paladin because I was that close to the starting tile so that really all went well and I'll just so that was a relatively easy run for that one and then the other game I played on tabletop was Octodice which is a roll and write game. I hadn't played that for, I think, a couple of years. So I, so I pulled that back out and played that a little bit. And so, so results for the, those particular runs on there. And tabletop apps, surprise, surprise, I played a little bit of Eon's End, where I played Zaxos versus and Kadir versus the Crooked Mask. And I was taking a beating very early on in this, again, pound to pound to pound it, and somehow barely crawled, clawed my way up to a win for that one, which meant I finally, I finally managed to get a win, at least one win with all of my mages. So that was good. And of course, that was the first time on the app where I managed to beat the Crooked Mask. Oh, nice. Yay! Now I gotta see if I can ever get to a point where I can actually defeat all of the nemeses. Because, because I've beaten Rageborn a couple of times, I've beaten the Crooked Mass now once, but I still have a couple more to go before I could have the entire set. We'll see how that goes. We currently have 16 supporters on Patreon. If you'd like to help support DDO players, simply go to the donations page where you can support the Players Alliance on Patreon. There you'll find rewards, including... A mention of the podcast, your choice, or EMB guest with us for an episode of DDO Players News. And I hear that this week we received an email. We did receive an email. It is from James. And he says, hey, Dragon Pine Leap. In your last episode, you talked about the news that DDO won't play on the Mac OS Catalina. And that the official word from the devs on the problem is simply, don't update your Mac if you want to play DDO. Then you, Drac, ask, ask on your show how many people actually play DDO or any game on a Mac anyway. You'd really like to know. Well, I can tell you how many of us there... I can't tell you how many of us there are, but I certainly do. However, I've been scouring the Mac user section of the forums for help with the is issue, and I see many, many others doing the same thing. It's plain unacceptable. Apple announced that they'd be doing this about two years ago. The DDO devs cannot claim to be unaware of this. It's not a surprise. It's not out of left field. It's been in the pipe for a long time. So should the 64-bit update to DDO. I have a metric ton of DDO points. I was really, really looking forward to keep on the Borderlands. I love DDO and I've been playing it casually for about 10 years. It's a totally shitty way to treat a, any percentage of your player base. I use my Mac to work from home, so I'll be updating it soon. Very likely before Keep on the Borderland comes out. Words do not suffi suffice to express my disappointment. As far as gaming on a Mac, it's not uncommon for non-Mac users to think. I played WoW for many years on my prior Macs, Elder Scrolls Online, Pillars of Eternity, Guild Wars, Neverwinter, etc, etc. I think we can all agree that DDO is getting long in the tooth. However, it has a constant dedicated player base that has deep affection and commitment for the game, which the devs seem to share, as well as foster. We hear their plans for the future and how they intend to keep the game going, but they ignore 64-bit support to their peril, in my humble opinion. Take care, James. Yeah. Now, there is, of course, one other bit here concerning this, and that is that Wine, as far as I know, is not yet compatible with... Now, I don't know why we, they went through all this effort to prepare a Wine client. If, I don't either. That's if what Wine I, is that 32-bit thing and won't be supported in Catalina. That's, what, about this. 
for that's a while. what I don't understand. But I I also don't understand why doesn't DDO have a 64-bit client like Lotro does? Because apparently the Lotro 64-bit client is going good. I haven't heard any major pitfalls with it. And I think you're running the 64-bit in Lotro, aren't you? No, I'm not. Because there was a point where there were some issues with it soon after it came out, and I had to switch back to 32. Oh, okay. And I oh, have well, not mem- yet had an opportunity to switch back yet. Oh, uh, well, maybe that's why we don't have one. Maybe it's not quite ready for prime time, as they say then. But, but yeah, that, I... I that don't know i agree i yeah i i don't know it seems like yeah but even if we had one that won't help the mac users right because of wine but i think i did read because i know i use wine under linux and i do think that the wine devs did say they are working on a 64-bit version of wine okay so that is in the pipeline there's no eta on that but yeah because and you know, I'm not a Mac user, so I, I, I can't speak for, for Mac users. But this is not just going to affect games, unfortunately. This is going to affect anything that is 32-bit. So if you have, like, uh, James says he, he uses his, his, his Mac for work. So if there was a certain piece of software that he used for work that was 32-bit, it would stop working. So it sucks, and I don't quite understand why... Apple is doing this, but of course it doesn't shock me because it's Apple. Because yeah. it makes the operating system a lot cleaner if you only have to support one platform. Right, right. I mean, I get it, but it's like people are paying a lot for those Macs, so... Yeah. But yeah, you know. I know uh, that... Okay. I suspect that if Microsoft had attempted to get rid of 64... Oh my God, there would have been a riot and their offices would have been looted and burned down and oh my god it, yeah it would have yeah. been horrible <laughs> because, I, because i don't think it was until because i don't think it was until vista when they stopped supporting 16 bit yeah it was vista it was like towards the end of vista's life they they stopped actually and that was a big like outcry too i don't know it's just it's kind of a no win situation, unfortunately. But thanks for writing in, James. Uh, appreciate it. If you would like to send us an email, you can send it to podcast at ddoplayers dot com, and you can also follow Twitter at the Players Alliance at Players Ally, DDO Players at DDO Players, Dracula at Dracula and Score seventy two, and Pony Fat Pony Needles, and you can follow Drac on Twitch at Dracula and Score seventy two. The Players Alliance has two shows on Mondays at 7 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time. We have DDO Players News and Saturdays at 8.30 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time. We have a load of Players News. You can choose for our live shows at ddoplayers.com slash live. And that's all for tonight. And this is Pony Needles reminding you to quest responsibly. <laughs>